Hello everyone, today's video is all about the decision in the UK Supreme Court uh, which affects Uber drivers. Now specifically the court said that the uh, Uber taxi drivers should be classed as workers rather than as self-employed contractors. So uh, what does this mean exactly? Well it means that these workers will be entitled to holiday pay and to the national minimum wage and also to pensions. So um, very interesting area, particularly given that Uber is just uh, a part of the, the wider gig economy. And, you know, in terms of how do you tax people, individuals who work in the gig economy? So in the UK, um, you've got um, employed and self-employed from a tax point of view. If you are employed, so you are an employee of someone else, then uh, there is uh, a chance that you will be uh, receiving your money under pay-as-you-earn deductions. That's normally what happens. And you are on the payroll of your employer and class one national insurance is due by you and your employer pays uh, class one secondary contributions. If you are self-employed, totally different regime for tax. You still end up paying income tax, so the, the actual tax is the same, but how it's calculated is very different. So as self-employed, typically you're allowed more deductions against your, your income, uh, and you will pay national insurance class two and class four, so not class one. Uh, it tends to be broadly that you are better off uh, from a tax point of view in terms of your take-home uh, pay if you can be treated as self-employed than employed. Now, in this recent court case with Uber, it's it's a kind of it introduces like a third a third classification, a so-called worker falls short of being an employee. So going forward, for now, even though the Uber drivers won their case in the Supreme Court and they are deemed to be workers and so subject to holiday pay, national minimum wage and pensions, it still falls short of, short of a recategorization to full uh, employee status, meaning for tax purposes, they will still be self-employed. So they will still continue to do tax returns in the same way, declare their income, um, usual deductions, and if they turn over a certain amount, have to be registered for VAT. So they will still act for UK tax purposes as if they were self-employed still, even though under employment law purposes, they are deemed to be workers um, because it, it didn't go the full the full way to say you are an employee. And if they had said in the Supreme Court, you are an employee, then they would have gone on the books of Uber as employees, but they didn't. So you've got this, this, this kind of halfway house as to this new categorization of being a worker, a worker who nonetheless has certain employment privileges, if you will, but they are technically self-employed for tax. So a little bit confusing, but that's the way it is. So, and coming back to the point about the overall gig economy, there has been a review into this. Um, the government commissioned a guy a year or so ago, two years ago now maybe, to say, look, let's have a look at the taxation of the gig economy because this does affect so many tens, or maybe hundreds of thousands of people now where five, ten years ago it, it, it wasn't as big as it, it is now. So, and then the, the chap came back and he said to the government, he said, actually, yes, I can see that um, we've got a few issues with this and basically just kicked, it, kicked the can down the road and said, for now, continue uh, taxing these people as self-employed. But now, of course, we have this, this headline-making decision yesterday. So this, this may change down the line. It may be that from a tax point of view, all these workers in the gig economy will be put on the books of the employer. Certainly the employer would not want that. Um, and from a tax point of view, um, a lot of the individuals might want, not want that. So I guess in, in their own minds, the individuals are saying, well, if we weigh up the fact that we might be paying 
less tax, you know, as, as being self-employed. But actually what we really want is this holiday pay and the pensions and a little bit more security of being more akin to an employee. And in their minds, that more than outweighs the the um, the tax the tax savings of being self-employed. So I think that's that's what a lot of the individuals are thinking. You know what? Well, maybe we would be better off in the long run in the overall scheme of things, not just purely from a tax point of view, to be uh, employed rather than self-employed. So watch this space. Who knows where it's it's going to go? But I suspect um, other firms, um, other organisations, again, will have court cases and there'll be further decisions. And I, and I guess the government will look at it again from a taxation point of view in terms of how these, these individuals should be taxed. So Uber came out straight away yesterday and said, 70,000 people in the UK we will now start um, providing holiday pay and, and national minimum wage and pensions. So, so yeah, so that's just a quick overview on Uber, the recent court case to give them some kind of what we would call employment rights without designating them fully as employees. If you like this video, do please subscribe right there and I will see you soon.